welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute little cottage out of felt and lavender and some other bits and pieces. So to start off with you'll need a selection of felt and these are all colours that I thought would look pretty good. You can see I've cut things out before. I've got stuff for the roof, stuff for the walls, there's some dark bits here. I think I was using those for roof as well. So just all different bits and pieces. This is wool viscose uh, felt, so really good quality and you can glue it and stitch it and all that sort of thing. So you need some of that. You'll also need some sort of uh, paper. So I've already done my templates, but I'll talk you through those in a minute. A selection of embroidery threads, and then um, obviously a needle, a marking implement, some snippers and scissors, uh, or just scissors. And then an optional extra is some bits and pieces for embellishment. So um, marker pens, what are they called? I've forgotten what they're called. Anyway, some coloured marker pens and bits and pieces of silk scrim and that kind of thing which I'll show you later for the embellishment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into sort of chapters if you like. So chapter one is the size of the cottage. Right so mine is based on a traditional Welsh longhouse and I'll show you the sort of size of it here. I'm going to show you the back because I don't want to show you the rest of the bits and pieces just yet. That's the sort of size it is. And um, so when I first had a go at doing this, I was very careful to mark it all down on squared paper, which is what I've done here. This is uh, some squared paper. And to try and get the proportions right. So the little Pembrokeshire co cottage or the longhouse, it looks like a single story. So the windows are quite low down and then you need a little bit of extra for the roof to overlap. It's got one of those low hanging roofs. And when I was happy with all the bits and pieces, I drew it all out and made sure I'd got a template. So that's the front and the back, obviously. And then this is the side with the gable end. And then this handily makes the roof and the base. So it's the same size, so it's across like that. And then you do two more, which will fit down sort of like that. And I'll give you the sizes for these, for this one. So the base measures three and one eighth inches. And then along the side, it measures one and seven eighths. And you would need three of those. Then the cottage front, three and one eighth to match the long edge of that. And then the height of that is one inch and six eighths. And then the side should be one and six eighths. And then across here should be one and seven eighths. And then what you do to get the height of it, you divide across here, so you divide it in half, run a vertical line up, and then that from the apex to the base, one and seven eighths again. I hope I've made that sort of reasonably clear and not too confusing. And then the last thing you need to do on the front piece is mark out where you're going to have your windows and remember there's going to be a door in the middle so you need to have enough space for a door in the middle so the distance between the windows i've made them one and one eighth across there that gap so i've also done a townhouse and the townhouse is a little bit bigger and that's because i wanted three windows at the top room for the door and then two larger windows at the bottom so the townhouse there's the base that also makes the roof and this doesn't have an overhanging roof this one actually gets stitched in like that and then this is the house side here why is that so far out i'll have to go back to the original and check that out i was going to give you the measurements but with that being wrong what I'll do is when I finally get my Patreon going, I'll do these as uh, PDF patterns anyway. So yeah, skip that. <laughs> We're going to uh, concentrate on this one. The next thing we need to do <laughs> is to decide what colour we're going to have it. So I'd like to have a contrast and because I live in Wales, I want to choose something that, you know, might look a little bit like slate or whatever. So I'm going to go for a green roof. This is going to be my roof. I don't know what colour should we go for of the walls. What about this one? That looks okay. We're going to go with this one. So I'll have this sort of browny grey marl. With a biro, biro is absolutely fine for this. We want to mark two cottage fronts, or well, front and a back. So I always try and go near the straightest edge and it's usually the cut edge from the manufacturer. So just draw around this. 
And then we're going to do another one here. That's those two. And then we need two sides of the house in the same colour. So I'm going to put that as close as possible along that line there, down there. And then I need another one. I'm just going to leave a little gap in between rather than going with the mistake and magnifying it by, you know, keep using the wrong bonky line. Probably me. Right. So that's those two pattern pieces used. And then for the roof and the base, they're all roughly the same size as well. So we just need three of these. Just be patient with felt. It does have a tendency to move around a bit. And even if your measuring is more accurate than mine, you'll find that it stretches and moves and it's fine. It's easy enough to stitch in. So that's our three on there and our four bits on there. Just need to get a massive pair of scissors and cut these out. Just do them as best you can. They don't have to be perfect. They'll be okay. So now I'm just going in and I'm just trimming off those pen marks just to make sure it's as accurate as possible because obviously that'll make it a little bit bigger. And the last bit we need to cut is on the other pattern. I've got it marked on here. I can't remember if I used the same size door, but I've already got some cut out somewhere. So what do we think would look best on our cottage? So this is the front here. I'm going to just mark these squares on. So to mark them on, I'm just cutting round to take out these little windows. I mean, even if you never make one of these again, you still need to make the template really. It just makes it easier. You saw how easy it was for me to cut everything out and just get going on it. I've made a few of these before, about, I don't know, made about five or six of them, I think. So there we go, we've got a little thing on here. It doesn't matter that it's not brilliantly accurate because we're going to put things over this. So we're either going to stitch it or we're going to use some other bits and pieces to make it look like windows. The first thing we're going to do of the embellishment is this door and then we can build everything else around it. And the door sits a little bit up off the bottom, which just makes it easier to sew later. And I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac glue. Even a universal glue will work with a wool and viscose. Yeah, even a bit of Pritt stick. You, you just want something that's gonna hold it in place while you're sewing it. It doesn't have to be perfect when it's where it's supposed to be. Stick it down. And then the next thing we're going to do is just draw on some little lines on here to make it look like a wooden door using a biro again, because I'm gonna sew over these. I'm doing eighth of an inch lines. There's the little lines. So I should just give you the measurements for the door because there's no pattern piece for that. There probably was, but because it's so small, I probably lost it. So that measures very roughly one and one eighth of an inch. That's the length. I think it would have originally been six eighths of an inch, but it sort of stretched a bit. That's the door there. So these are the alcohol markers that I couldn't remember the names of. So I have lots and lots of these because they're so great for putting in details on the fabric, which is what we're gonna do now. You could use normal felt tips. And really could, as long as they're permanent and not water soluble, you'll be fine. So what we're gonna do is just round the bottoms of these pieces and along around the door here, we're going to just sort of dirty up a bit, try and make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna start on the back on the inside just to make sure I've got the right color. Yeah, that one's fine. So that looks like a sort of mossy color going up the paint, which is what you often see where I live because it's so dumb. So we're just gonna go along the bottom and I'm gonna come back with another color in a minute and along the bottom of each side. And if they're like these markers, make sure you're in a well-ventilated room, please. So I'm just gonna work along here. This stuff is permanent, so it's on my table already, but I don't mind, this is my work table and I quite like seeing bits and pieces, but if you're at all concerned, make sure you do it on um, a surface that doesn't matter. And then, because these are alcohol markers, I can go over it again with the first color, this one. That one worked the best. And then you can just really start to mix it in. So that's the side that's not been gone over again. This is the size that has, and it sort of reactivates the, the marker pen. So there we are. So we've done the front and the two sides. And I'm going to go over this line that I drew on with Biro. And I'm going to go over with the, the pen. And I'm doing it freehand because I want it to look a bit more naturalistic. You know that silver mesh? You can get it in gold 
um, like a copper colour and silver. If you cut it on the bias, you can stretch it and you can make it look like paned windows. Right. <laughs> I found some. This stuff. This. See, so if you cut it on the bias, it'll stretch like that. So it looks like window panes. It's also very shiny. I don't know anyone that has shiny, shiny silver windows, so. With the grey, all we're trying to do is knock back that silver. If you haven't got alcohol markers and things like that, this is what you can do instead for your windows. So I've coloured that in actually with an alcohol marker, but you could use felt behind. You could use a Sharpie. You could even colour it in with a biro if you wanted to, and then just stitch around with um, some embroidery thread to make it look like little windows. So that's what you could do instead, but we're gonna do these little windows out of this meshy stuff. When it's dry, you can tell if it's dry because if you put your fingers on it, no more comes off. I'm just gonna go over it again, just to knock it back as much as possible. And then I'm going to uh, cut out two little squares, literally stick them on there. And what I've done is I've tried to cut through the middle of the squares to make it look more like a window. So I'm just gonna lay this on and see how much I need. I don't need a huge amount. So the window might come out a little bit bigger than, than we intended anyway, just so we can use these fancy bits. So there's two ways of attaching these windows. One is to glue them, the other one is to sew them on. I think we're going to just put a little dot of glue on and leave these to dry. And then your best bet is to put that on one side and leave it well alone till it's completely dry. While that's drying, I'll start talking about the other embellishments. You can see I've done two little lavender bushes and this has literally been done with three strands of thread for the leaves and I've looped them back and forth like that and then stitched it on in a tuft and just snipped the ends and then cut it to shape. And then underneath it's got just little single strands of embroidery thread to do all the, the little stems in the background and then the flowers, I've done two shades of sort of lavendery, purpley colours, and it's um, a French knot using one strand with a little line coming out the end to make it look like a flower. There's even some little, just little seed stitches on their own. So there's actually no complicated stitches, it's just how you apply them. And I'll put in the description some links to embroidery videos that I've done. I've certainly done French knots and seed stitches and things like that. And then the only other stitch you need to worry about is um, the Lazy Daisy stitch. And I did one recently, which is a really nice sort of modern embroidery video. So I'll put the link to that as well. Because this is my rose bush, because this is called, this one's going to be Rose Cottage. And this one is made just using a straight stitch. I Underneath I drew with a biro, just like a thing that looked a little bit like a bush or a tree and then I just did straight stitch or back I did back stitch <laughs> just looking on the back back stitch on that just to to um, highlight all the the branchiness and then all of the leaves are two different shades of um, embroidery thread um, one sort of yellowy green and one a sort of darker yellowy green and then I've done a little tiny lazy daisy stitch to make all the little leaves so that's how the leaves are done and you can just put as many or as few as you want. You can also then alternate the colour if you're using two shades of green. You could use two, shade, two strands of the dark green and put them lower down to the bottom of the branches. And then you could use the two strands of the lighter green and put those on the top so you can start getting some shading in if you want to. Honestly, I didn't. And then the roses, how I do the roses, the little tiny ones again I use two different colors of thread so I'm using like a medium to dark pink and then a light pink and a strand of each of those no a light it was two strands of the dark color and one of the light so the buds at the top are just a French knot using those three strands and then the more full roses are a French knot in the middle and then literally a straight stitch, a straight stitch, a straight stitch, a straight stitch to show the sort of petals going round and you just do it however many times you think it looks really good. I think I've put five extra stitches around and that's how I made the little rose bush. So while we're still waiting for the front of the cottage to dry, I'm going to get the two roof panels 
because these are going to go on like so. But first of all, we want to do a little bit of detailing. So using again a marker pen or a biro or something, what I do is I draw a little line at the top and then I divide this into little tiny bits. And these are your ridge tiles because this is the only detailing that's gonna go on the roof. And do the same on the other side. So a little freehand line and divide it into ridge tiles. They don't have to be the same number. Can't see the front and the back at the same time anyway. So that's little ridge tiles there. And then I'm just gonna do little bits of lines, not all across, but bits like so. And remember they'll look bigger as they get towards where we can see them going to do any spaces and then just do some little lines just join, joining things together. It's just an impression of tiles so it's literally that. <laughs> okay so and then do the same on the other bit of roof as well. Mix it up a bit. If you want to draw them all in you can but I just think the impression looks nicer. There we are. So that's the detailing for the roof. Now we're back to some gluing, so I'm showing you this a bit out of order but it will make sense because I'm still waiting for the front to dry to show you what to do with the sewing. But when you get to this stage, you will be, when you've done all your embellishments and your windows and your sewing and any little cute trees and bushes and things, you stitch it, you start stitching it together and you literally just do a whip stitch all the way around and I chose um, a grey that was similar to my base colour. That's also why I tint the bottom of these pieces because can you see that that looks, you know, you can barely notice that whereas where I've forgotten to tint this one you can see the stitches really clearly so that's why I do it because it looks really good and you, you put them wrong sides together and you stitch it on the outside. I did try doing it where you turned it through and it just looked a bit, it looked like a tea cosy which, which is fine for a tea cosy but not so much for a little cottage. So once you've done that bit and you've got it to this stage and you've done your little bits with the roof, I just need to check out the height of the roof. You need to overlap it practically to the door. And what we're going to do is we're gonna run a little line of glue right along the top of here because we want this bottom bit of the roof to be loose. And then the smallest, smallest amount of glue right along this edge. And if you use the icing method where you don't try and lay a continuous line of glue but you do try and do little beads of glue, it's a lot more successful. Especially if your glue comes out, that's really helpful. Get it the right way up, just stick that on there. Glue is not enough to hold this. Remember this is going to be stuffed so when this is dry we need to go back and stitch that in place. And now I'm just going to do the same on the other side. And I'm just going to have to guess. So I think it's about there. So these are pretty much dry now. I'm just trying to trim them up so they're the same. So I'm going to find something that's suitable for window frames. And that's a possibility, sort of a brown. I don't think I want white today, which is just as well because I don't know where it is. Yeah, we'll use that one then. And I'm going to use three strands. We need to separate, this is just regular six stranded embroidery thread. I'm just going to separate it out, hopefully it will do it without me having to do each one individually. Thread up a needle and then I'm going to start on one corner here. I'm going to divide it in half. So this is supposed to look like a sort of wooden framed window. And I'm literally just doing great big stitches and then these are going to be continuous, you know, a long stitch here. I'm not going to do a break in there. And then sort of roughly in the middle again. This is a little old cottage, so stuff's all warped. It doesn't need to be perfect. See, already it's looking a bit more like a window. And I think I want to make this into a, is that a casement window that opens in the middle? I think so. So I'm going to stitch up the middle as well. Oh yes, perfect, I like that. And then I'm going to stitch around all of those again so that they look a little bit thicker. And this is why I love doing these so much. Every single cottage that you make is completely different and you are completely autonomous about the design. You can really let your imagination run riot or you can make it photorealistic 
or you can make it look like someone's house or it's it's so it's, it's really addictive once you get going so there's the window frame and obviously you do the same thing again there and then i'll just show you um the doing the detail on the door you actually need to start one stitch in because it's hard to come up through a layer of cut felt so you start there and go back down just stitch down and this really doesn't need to be perfectly straight we're just putting in little details and then as always I'm going to promise that when this is finished I'm going to put lovely pictures on Instagram so that you can go and look and we all know that I will eventually but it might not be next week <laughs> so. so when you've done all of your embellishing and embroidering and everything so you've done your door and you've done your window frames and maybe put some long plants and things you can do um you can do geraniums uh, by doing um, a blanket stitch in a circle for the leaves and then stems, just straight lines for stems and then lots and lots and lots of um, French knots in very bright red or something and look amazing. That's probably what I will do on this one. When you've done your embellishment, however you choose to do it, you need to start stitching your cottage together. Now, I already talked about how to do the base and this should be dry now, so I'm just going to quickly go back and stitch this on. So I'm just going to do a running stitch across here and this is just to hold this in place. Now this is going to show on the roof but because I've chosen grey and I'm not stitching too tightly it's not going to show that much and it will just look like sort of roof tile detail. Um, and this is just making sure that you know it's sturdy. It's already glued in place but it's going to be under a lot of um, squish pressure <laughs> so because i'm going to stuff it with lavender and i want to stuff it quite tight so i want to make sure it's not going to come undone so just do a running stitch all the way across both bits of roof and this is the best way i've found so far to get this detail in um is to use glue and then sewing because sewing if you want it to just be sewing is a bit too definite a straight line and because i want that overhanging roof here this is, the, this is the best solution I've found, but if you find a better one, that's great. I don't know if you can see that line. I don't know how well that shows up. This is like funny little stitches, but honestly, it's gonna be okay. It looks okay. And then we've got a point that can pivot, you see, on the, like that. So it makes that bit. Right, I'll go and do this one. I'll go and stitch this one on and then I'll come back. Right, so I have stitched together the two back walls, if you like, and now I'm just gonna show you how to stitch it. So I'm using two strands of embroidery thread. I've tied a knot in the bottom. What you do is you stitch into the corner from the inside first, and then that means that the knot's on the inside. Remember, this is gonna be stuffed. It doesn't need to sit flat. It does need to not come out, wow. And then you pinch these two bits together until you've got them lined up so this has got an angle on it and then this ends here so just roughly lined up there and then pinch it all the way down and then we're just going to tuck that flipping knot back in you're going to find the other opposite corner and stitch back through and then we're just going to keep going like that once you've done a couple of stitches it sort of locks together and it's okay and i hope you can see what i'm doing there just keep whip stitching all the way up until you get to the top Then when you get to the top, just turn around and come back the other way and do a few stitches. This is going to be hidden by the roof line anyway. See there? Do a few stitches. Do a couple of loop stitches. So I don't even know what this is called. So you make a loop, you put the needle through it and you do like a part, knee, part knot. And then just thread the needle all the way back up to the top through the seam. Pull it through and then just snip it off. I need to go and do the last one um, up this side here. And then when that's done, the next thing that needs to be done is um, the roof needs stitching this way. So you just ease that round and stitch it. Choose whatever colour you want. I will probably choose grey to go with the roof because I think it looks slightly less offensive than having this duck egg blue coming through on the roof line. I can always tint it afterwards with the pens if I'm not happy with it. So you're going to stitch all four bits of roof on and then the only bit that will be left open 
is along the ridge and that's where we're going to stuff with the lavender so I'll come back and show you that bit. I've finished stitching all the sides and the roof together that's the dark stitching along the roof line doesn't look too bad so we've got one bit left open just the roof the top of the roof I'm going to now just stuff it with some lavender this is just normal dried lavender there's no uh, fixative on it so it's not like my stuff of potpourri and sachets and things that I showed you at Christmas this is just dried lavender and that's perfectly fine for this because when I first designed these cottages the idea was that you could use them as pin cushions if you wanted to so I really didn't fancy having any orris root powder or lavender oil or anything in there um, because I didn't want to affect the pins and needles and things like that so you really need a lot of lavender in here and just keep pushing it down you want to be able to still get the top to meet so once you're at maximum stuffing we need to just stitch that last bit together just like the sides you need to put your needle in like so and then the knot will be on the inside Then push the two edges together and you can feel with felt you can feel when it's slipping through the edge of the fabric or when you've actually got it to make a stitch when in doubt do it twice and then just slip stitch all the way across Right, and there it is, it's finished. So now I'm just pushing all the bits where they need to be. So just taking each side and just tapping it into place. There's a cute little lavender filled cottage. Isn't it sweet? <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching me make it and it's given you a little bit of inspiration to have a go yourself and practice all your embroidery stitches and how to use different bits of pieces and it's, a, it's such a nice little thing it only takes a few hours to make and then you can have it standing on your shelf in your workroom or give it as a present to someone or use it as a pin cushion and remember if you want to see more videos that are nothing like this because all my videos are different <laughs> please consider subscribing to the channel um hi to all my new subscribers hello hello i'm waving and thank you for all your support on ko-fi and instagram and you can find any of the links down in the description um so thanks very much guys and i'll see you in a couple of weeks time bye